There is no justification for the healthcare sector to overlook the necessity and requirements of FHIR. Nor is there any excuse for the recent catastrophic data breaches and ransomware damages in healthcare. Solutions to address these issues are available in today's marketplace, and one promising solution will soon be open sourced. Initially, we choose the HL71 directory containing HL7 segments for automatic processing into a FHIR repository. Here, we examine some of the raw HL7 data segments. Subsequently, we configure the parameters necessary to convert the raw HL7 segments into a FHIR repository. This comprehensive process involves converting the raw HL7 segments into HL7 JSON format, then translating the HL7 JSON into FHIR JSON, followed by organizing it into a FHIR bundle, and ultimately depositing it into the designated FHIR repository. We accomplish this by selecting the HL7 source directory and specifying the FHIR repository for the migration of HL7 segments. Optionally, I create and store a backup copy of the newly generated FHIR data. Finally, we initiate the process by clicking the Run icon and await its completion. Now that the process is completed, we will proceed to test the FHIR repository and make a FHIR API call to retrieve a patient record from the repository. As we observe, we have the option to select information from one of over 100 FHIR resources. Additionally, we can choose the capability to read, put, or utilize other options to interact with the FHIR repository. I opt to view the results of the FHIR API call in the key value pair format instead of the JSON format. We can either proceed with the display option or execute the process and directly download the results. To ensure end-to-end -end secure encryption of the entire and ongoing FHIR processes, we click the Generate Key icon. This action initiates the decryption process, allowing the requested data from the FHIR repository to be decrypted and displayed on the screen or downloaded in a readable format. After completing the process, we proceed to view the information on the screen first. Next, we choose the option to download the results and click on the downloaded file to access and review the patient information. Here, we quickly view the backup of the HL7 data that has been written to the FHIR repository, and we notice that it is encrypted in the same manner as the FHIR repository. We have developed our own specialized APIs that, unlike FHIR, which returns information for one patient at a time, offer query capabilities allowing for many-to-one results for patients or any FHIR resources, thereby enhancing the FHIR capabilities. Currently, we are defining the parameters for the FHIR search report options. Initially, we select the source of the FHIR server we wish to generate the report from, along with the FHIR version. In order to streamline the process for users navigating through the extensive array of over 100 FHIR resources in tens of thousands of fields, we have developed an interface. This interface allows users to search by resource, receive a list of fields within that resource, and then search for a partial or complete field name for selections to construct reports. Here, we're selecting three FHIR resources and choosing several fields from each one to incorporate into the user-defined report. Once the report process is initiated, we'll examine the results on the screen. Our API possesses the same capability and intelligence as the native FHIR API, enabling it to understand the many-to-many -many relationships and other rules necessary to accurately retrieve all requested data. Developing this capability took months of effort to achieve precise results. After reviewing the results on the screen, we've opted to securely download the data to our device. Similar to previous processes, we're prompted to click the Generate Key button to enable decryption of the securely encrypted data stored in the FHIR server. This allows us to obtain the requested readable data and incorporate it into the downloaded report. We've also integrated the capability to filter results by entering a value for each required field and selecting the type of match, such as the like option, greater than or less than, among others. Initially, in the first process, we searched for all the data within the selected data fields and then reviewed the completed report. Next, we will repeat the same process as before, but this time, we will search for patients who are pre-diabetic. Upon viewing the results, we'll observe that it only returned patients with prediabetes. This adds significant value as it allows us to search for specific illnesses, medications, providers, and more, enabling us to identify large groups of patients with similar scenarios. 
We can then compare patient characteristics, providers, geography, age, and many other elements to evaluate and identify possible trends and benefits from these results. As mentioned earlier, the ability of generic reporting, research, and ETL tools to accurately interpret and compile comprehensive reports from FHIR data remains uncertain, with few even claiming to do so. I hope that, above all, you've gained the knowledge and confidence that there exists technology capable of streamlining the process of converting raw HL7 data into a FHIR repository and meeting 80% to 100% of the needs of many companies. Importantly, this will significantly reduce processing time and position companies better to comply with the 21st Century Cures Act, thereby avoiding violations of HIPAA information blocking regulations. Moreover, this application extends beyond HIPAA compliance by addressing the issue of FHIR repositories not automatically encrypting data to meet HIPAA regulations. Thank you for watching the entire video, and please feel free to reach out with any questions, suggestions, partnership inquiries, requests for demos, or any other assistance we can provide. Reach Steven Meister to discuss this opportunity and become part of the team. Contact him at steven at corporate-payback.com or call 847-440-4439.